You're listening to Creep Geeks Podcast. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30 day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash cheap geek. So begins again. Welcome back to the Creepy East Podcast, episode number one five two. Top nine paranormal news and events of twenty nineteen. Number three, alien spacecraft in our solar system. Yeah. So it begins again. Welcome back to the Creep Geeks Podcast. This is our top nine paranormal news and events of 2019, number three. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go ahead and do a recap real quick. This is your very first time tuning into the podcast. We very much appreciate having you here and listening to us. Thank you. Yeah. Now, this particular podcast right here is normally pretty long, but these that we're doing right now, this series, this top nine series is short. Yeah. It's short because we decided to make it short as a little holiday gift, I guess. If you celebrate the holidays, happy holidays. If you don't celebrate the holidays, happy holidays. <laughs> well, no, At know. least you have something <clears throat> to listen through to for the rest of December. Yeah. So we decided, you know what, let's see, because most people, and by people I mean other podcasts, don't actually do like a, a holiday thing. It'll do like an episode and that's it. But we decided we're going to just power through it and just podcast all the way through the holiday season. Well, we did notice a lot of folks in the both podcasting and paranormal community. This is like the wind down period. Yeah. So, you know, they're doing stuff like vacationing and, and spending time with their families. Not us, though. <laughs> Don't nope. see that. <laughs> we're powering through it. So anyway, we decided to do these little, about 30 minute little quick podcast to talk about subjects that we found over the year. To be of great significance. Well, we didn't. Well, we kind of Well, you didn't let me finish. Yeah. Now you just said. Because what we did was, since we do a paranormal and weird news podcast, where we actually broadcast our offbeat news podcast, right, from the bunkers of Western North Carolina. Yeah. You're just butchering it. I'm not butchering nothing, man. It's the holidays, and this is what it is. The holidays are happy, filled with joy. Aggravation, frustration, and the top nine paranormal news and events of 2019. Yes, yeah, right. And the good news is it's free. Doesn't cost you anything but your time. So hopefully you're listening out in the parking lot in the car, keeping the car warm while your family's in the mall shopping and spending all your money. Or all their money, that's even better. You know, Or you're or, stuck at work. Or if you're stuck at work, working the shift, hopefully trying to get that double extra Kung Fu pay for working late. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you're not and you're like, got to work anyway, well, I think it kind of sucks too. But, you know, maybe you're out cutting the grass because it's December and your grass is still growing. And you're like, why is the grass still growing? It's December. Yeah. Yeah. But what we... Or maybe if you're shoveling the snow on the sidewalk because that's what you got to do because wintertime sucks where you live and the snow keeps coming down. (laughs) I'm not a fan of the cold, everybody. I'm just not. Yes. Anyway, the top nine, though, it's we have curated this top nine due yes. to the Internet trending topics. Public opinion. Public opinion. Popularity. What everyone. News broadcasts. Yes. That kind of thing. What the general public has deemed noteworthy this year as reported by us. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. And so... With that in mind, we didn't write these stories. We didn't make them up. They just, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. We just report on it using absolutely the best minimal effort we can. (laughs) (laughs) You just stop it. Well, this is why we have such a wildly unsuccessful podcast. Yeah. But no, in all seriousness, though, we figured we'd kind of do 
a, just a series of quick podcasts to kind of maybe hold you over. Because, you know, New Through Year's the coming. Holidays. Right. Yeah. yeah. So this particular podcast right here, the Creep Geeks podcast, is going to be <clears throat> available to you everywhere. And we have a couple different ways for you to interact with us, and we're going to go ahead and talk about them real quick right now. Mm-hmm. The first uh, way. Yes, first way is creepgeeks.com. We have a contact form that you can fill out with your experience if you'd like to share. Right? Yeah. Second way is a phone number. That phone number is going to be 575-208-4025. That is a voicemail inbox. Yes. So if you want to be anonymous, go ahead and call. Tell us your story. Give us your lead. And let us know if you want your name mentioned on the show. Yep. And the third way is uh, you can go to our Facebook group. We have a Creep Geeks Facebook group and a Creep Geeks Facebook page where you can interact and share some stuff. We share funny stuff, happy stuff, great stuff, weird stuff, scary stuff. Spooky stuff. Spooky stuff. And you can kind of share. Mm -hmm. And you can, uh, you know, enjoy yourself while you're there. Also free. (laughs) Another way you can support the podcast, if you feel up to it, if you're listening to this podcast uh, on your favorite podcast player and you want to make a review or leave a comment, that kind of thing, uh, you could do that. We appreciate that as well, whether you're listening to us on SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, Google Pandora. Podcasts, Pandora. Everywhere. Yeah. Um, what's Everywhere that? quality podcasts can be found. Yeah, funny, right? It's like, why are we there? But we're there anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, and if you also want to support us using Amazon Prime, you can do that because if you shop and you have Amazon Prime and you buy something using our affiliate link, we'll get a small percentage, doesn't, change your price at all and it helps to keep coffee flowing and gas in our albino rhino or DIY camper van and that affiliate link is amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash cheap geek we'll also put a link in the show notes as with everything we talk about links are in the show notes that you can see on your phone or if you visit our website so let's go ahead and get right into it and that took about seven minutes (laughs) so I'm just saying (laughs) Yeah, so we're like, we got like 23 minutes to, to, to wrap it up, right? <laughs> oh, and if you listen to the podcast on YouTube, because we do have that, where we put our audio podcast on YouTube, it's not a video, man. It's still an audio podcast. Yes. I feel like I have to explain that. Oh. Because some people are like, it's, <laughs> why, like my favorite comment of all time, why is this video an hour and 26 minutes long, exclamation point. You know what, though? It's an audio podcast. I'd rather deal with that question than some of the questions we get at some of these conferences and conventions. Yes. What's a podcast? Exactly. How much does that cost? <laughs> like, how much does what cost? A podcast. Well, ours is free. Yeah. Well, what's the catch? That's, you just have to listen to it. Yeah. But when do I do that? Whenever you want. What do you mean whenever I want? It's like, okay, look, man, this is like playing a tape. You can play a tape whenever you want. Press the button and play. It's internet uh, radio. Nobody talks like that. <laughs> Actually. Uh, that was a terrible impression, and I apologize for all those people listening right now. <sighs> to Omi's terrible impression. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, speaking of the alien spacecraft that's oh, been buzzing our galaxy. Great segue. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, this thing has been flying through our galaxy here, our solar system, if you will, and it sort of became popular in the news because people were like, what is this thing? And it became obvious that it wasn't from our solar system. It was from somewhere else. Hmm. Yeah. And what I realized is that this thing is called Umau Mau. Yeah. And we've been trying to pronounce it, and we've been pronouncing it incorrectly ever since we talked about this thing because it's made the news multiple times. Yeah. So this is the mysterious cigar-shaped object that whizzed past our solar system last year. Right, and it was spotted by the Pan Stars One telescope in Hawaii, and the speculation is that it may actually be an alien probe from interstellar interstellar space. Okay, what does that mean? I don't know. I don't know. But Umamao means scout or messenger, and it's just plain weird. Four hundred meters long, about a quarter of a mile wide, you know, yeah, or long. I should say it's about how long it is, about a quarter mile, and it's a little as a tenth wide. So this was it like forty feet. It's not very wide. So, what is that noise? Your laptop, that's what it is. Oh, it's playing the mysterious solar system noise. Okay. So, this link that we actually have, and all of our links are in the show notes, comes from time.com, and it's Time Magazine, right? Yeah. And if you click on it to read the story, 
don't be alarmed when it starts playing a video and scares the garbage out of you when you're sitting here on the internet, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to do a podcast. But so it's about 400 meters long, 40 feet wide. So it's like a spear, right? It's like this weird looking cigar shaped object. It's kind of weird because it's, you know, not only is it not really sort of look like anything that we have that we, we've seen. Yeah. Right. But it's also red. Oh. Yep. And it flew by us at a trajectory that indicated that it clearly did not come with, from within our solar system. And it actually accelerated during the course of transit. And people were like, what? what? This thing is being remote controlled and somebody put the hammer down. Which is kind of strange. So this red looking thing goes whizzing through our solar system, right? Yeah. And there's a couple of people that actually found it and they talk about it and they try to explain like what would cause this sort of increase in speed. Because they do know the comets are known to speed up during their flight through the solar system because solar heat causes an evaporation and outgassing produces the comet's characteristic trail. You know, like the tail that comes off of it. Yeah. But Umamau has no detectable tail. Hmm. Yep. And basically, it spins at a steady rate. So, you know, if, if it was kind of going end over end, it'd be easier to pick up too. But it was hard to see. But they finally, they found it with the Stars 1. And they've been kind of watching it go by. And so when it comes to the speed of the thing, they don't know what would actually cause it, but there's two possibilities. Solar wind, right? Or there's basically a storm of charged particles that are forever streaming from the sun and kind of in the solar radiation creates like a gentle push, which is then imparted by electromagnetic energy when it contacts an object. Yeah. So it's that radiation pressure that's basically what they call uh, behind what causes the object to be sort of acts like a solar sail. So the radiation from the sun sort of pushes against it, creates like a sail effect. And that's what kind of gets the acceleration going. Hmm. So they're saying that, you know, this, this energy solar sail or what they call light sail technology is increasingly being used as an effectively free and exhaustible means, inexhaustible means to accelerate a spacecraft once they're flying free. So we actually use that. Okay. Yeah. Sun hits the panels kind of unfolds the solar sail, if you will, and it sort of pushes it and helps it accelerate. But um, they're trying to say that, you know, the amount of force that it exerts is negligible, which means that it's not enough to account for the acceleration. This thing actually sort of started, you know, picking up some speed. Yeah. And they're saying that the amount of speed that it actually increased by would not be caused by the sun with the solar fail, solar sail effect. Or the, the yeah, the tail whips. Yeah, because yeah. it doesn't have one. And they're also saying that in order for that to actually work, it'd have to be really thin, like 0.3 to 0.9 millimeters is how thin that thing would have to be to be affected by that amount yeah. of uh, solar radiation to kind of push it. So it's kind of weird. That's yeah. all I'm going to say about that. Okay. <laughs> Well, you know, they, and it's just, it's weird because it looks like this rock looking spear thing. It's red and goes whizzing through our galaxy and speculation has been, you know, it's obviously been sent our way, right? For something. So here's the thing for me though, this Omamu or whatever was first. I think we're just going to call it Omamu. Omamu. Yeah. I mean, wasn't it first observed in 2017, started picking up news traction late 2018 yeah. But then this year, 2019, the reason it was in the news so much was because <clears throat> of that that um, acceleration. Th- well, not just the acceleration, but the Harvard University Astronomy Department. Yeah. Uh, Avi Loeb, who he was the one that was kind of, I guess, leaning towards the whole space thing, the spacecraft thing. And mm. the Washington Post News Service removed story about Harvard astronomers theory. Well, yeah, because, Which, yeah. you know, he's saying that it's like a fully operational probe sent to intentionally, yeah. it's intentionally to earth yeah. by an alien, alien, possible alien civilization. So it was like for the beginning of 2019, it was like we had this credible person who had a theory and yes, the theory is kind of out there. However, media chose to just, remove the story or discredit it. Yeah. Which allowed the UFO community to kind of pick up traction and roll with it. Yeah. Blow it out of proportion yeah. a little bit. But 
don't know. Yeah. I well, do. Yeah. And here's, and here's what makes it different. They said if, if it was a natural object ejected by a solar system, it would be possible to match the speed with which it approached us to the size and mass of the star that likely spit it out. Yeah. But only one in 500 stars in our region of the galaxy would produce precisely that speed, reducing the odds of a natural source. Yeah. There's really no way to know, right? If, if this thing came in contact with, you know, other objects out there or had what they call gravitational influences to alter its speed or trajectory. Yeah. So they don't have really any uh, idea. And that's the thing. Like he's. So the idea of aliens. Yeah. It's just as plausible as anything else. And that's what he's kind of saying or stressing, you know. He's like saying, well, he, while he's not saying it's definitely aliens, he can't think of anything else um, other than aliens that would fit that prescribed behavior for this thing. Yeah. Um, and that's what's making international news. However, here in the U.S., you had places like Washington Post and other places just remove interviews and articles about him. And he's like, many people expect, expected that once there was this type of reaction, I'd back down. But if someone shows me evidence to the contrary, I'll immediately back down. In the meantime, he doubled down and he hosted a Reddit AMA. There you go. <laughs> you know? Okay, for those yeah. of you who don't know what a Reddit AMA is, that means ask me anything. Yeah. A-M-A. So that's why, I, I don't know, that's why I think it was really important for, or it may have been important for 2019. Yes. Well, I mean, it was popular. It was on the news. Yeah. Like multiple times. So, because the first time we actually seen it or heard about it was what, November 6th, 2018? No. Mm. Well, one of the last articles that came out was like November 6th, 2018, but it came back again. It's like, oh, there it is. Yeah. The whole solar sail thing and the color and all that. So, yeah, kind of a weird thing. This cigar shaped object whizzing through our galaxy. Yeah. And that's one of the things that sort of, uh, you know, caught my eye. It was like, because they actually said that it's like whizzing through our galaxy. Yeah, <laughs> here comes this thing. So. Okay, so speaking of some other stuff in the news, that's kind of related to the space thing. Yeah. It also happened in 2019, right? Yeah. So the Event Horizon Telescope, which is a planet-scale array of eight ground-based radio telescopes forged through International collaboration captured the image of this supermassive black hole in the center of the galaxy. For the first time. And the galaxy is M87. Yeah. Yeah. So they actually took a picture of a black hole. So black holes have finally been dragged out of the shadows. For the first time ever, humanity has photographed one of these elusive comic cosmic beasts. Mm -hmm. Shining light on the exotic space-time realm has long been beyond our kin. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Neither do I. Yeah, I think they're saying it, you know, I don't know. So, <clears throat> that was kind of a big deal. Yeah. So, this person took a picture, right, of a mm -hmm. black hole and part of the event horizon. That's the weird part. Yeah. Yeah. So, we have seen what we thought was unseeable. And it came from Shepard Dolman of Harvard University at the uh, at Harvard University and the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. And this was in April. Yeah. So, it's like, what? Because, you know, I didn't know you couldn't see a black hole. <clears throat> oh. Well, I mean, it makes sense. It's, it's a black hole. But, you know, you see the you know, artist depictions and stuff like that where basically it's, you know, everything being sucked into this black hole and you think you'd be able to see it. But really, that's not necessarily the case. But the imagery is mind-blowing enough in its own right. Oh. And the that's same. That's what they're saying. Like, the what? same astronomer is referenced in this article as the oh mau mau. Yes. Avi Loeb. Yeah. Avi Loeb. Yeah. So, you know, then so they go through and they talk about black holes and we're looking at a loss of photons and also the crazy stuff because it actually sucks the light in. It's really hard to take a picture of. So, I don't know. I thought it was pretty neat to have this picture taken. But the thing is, is that they're the person that actually took the picture is not credited in this article that we're I looking know. at. That's and that's what, what we're looking because look at. she was very happy about it as well. She should be. So she's uh, like the unsung, unsung sort of hero here. And we're trying to find her name real quick. And I meant to put it in here before we started, but I did not. Yeah. So. Katie Bowman. The that's woman what it behind is. the first black hole image. Yeah. She just looks like a, you know, scientific nerd, nerd lady. 
just chilling, just very happy that she took a picture of a black hole, and she should be. I thought it was pretty neat. Yeah. Like, wow. So I'm sure that would make Einstein happy. <laughs> you know, I mean, seriously, if you think about it, it's like, well, there's a black hole. We know it's a black hole. It should be there. And they took a picture of it. Oh. So, Albert Einstein. She's a 29-year-old computer scientist. Yes. Yes. That's Who cool. took all the data together and basically composited it and turned it into a black hole. Wow. So there you go. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? I think so. Yep, pretty neat. Now, here's where it gets really fun, aside from, you know, the real stuff out there, like this mysterious asteroid, you know, Umamao, wasn't through our galaxy, taking pictures of black holes. More currently, there is a recently retired U.S. Air Force general who makes eyebrow-raising claims about advanced space technology. Huh. There's a happy picture of this dude, right? Steve uh, Quast, who's recently retired, lieutenant general, gave a lecture last month. Yeah. And he's talking about leadership and, you know, military and space force. And he basically had some comments in his lecture that heavily hint at the possibility that the U.S. military and its industry partners may have already developed next generation technology that have the potential to drastically change the aerospace field and human civilization forever. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he says a bunch of stuff. Right? Yeah. And they go through and they talk about this uh, in this particular article. It came off actually the Drive, and we have a link to it, drive.com. Hmm. And it talks about his illustrious history, and he has, he has a whole chest full of ribbons and medals and stuff. Wow. In this picture. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was looking at that. I was like, wow. <laughs> He's got a lot more than I did. Yeah. Because I'm looking at him. I'm like, okay, I've got that one. It's just something that every military dude does. Yeah. When they see somebody else in the military where they have all their medals and ribbons on. Like in this particular case, it's like his headshot photo because he's lieutenant general, right? I'm counting the ones that I have as well. Like I got that one and that one and I got that one too and that one. So I have like five of the ones that he has. So anyway, I thought it was kind of neat. Yeah. <clears throat> but basically, <laughs> according to some reports, right, here's where we have to discredit him because that's what the article does. He was prematurely relieved of his duties at JBSA. And blacklisted for promotion after speaking out at a sp- oh. speaking out on space related issues, despite a service wide gag order. <sighs> so <clears throat> he had to. He basically retired. Yeah. Whether he had to or not, he went ahead and retired. But some of the controversy surrounding his removal, and basically some of the things that he'd been talking about, they were kind of basically saying, okay, since his retirement happened. Um, because of what he said, that he should be appointed as the commander of the Pentagon's budding space force. Huh. I mean, why not? Right? Yeah. I mean, he's, you know, he's going to say what he has to say. But <clears throat> he does talk about the urgent need for U.S. space force. Because he says things like China is developing space technology where they have like the equivalent of a Navy in space. Yeah. Like they have the space-based equivalents of battleships and destroyers, which are able to maneuver and kill and communicate with dominance, and we, the United States, are not. In other words, he's saying that China is already building these things, and they already have some success with it so far, yeah. and we're not ready. We're not prepared. And he worries about the space force that you know needs to counter these Chinese advances and win the competition. Yeah. Right between... China and us for as far as the, you know, the new 21st century space being like the, you know, the Navy, right? Yeah. Space is the Navy for the 21st century economy. Hmm. And he talks about a networked economy that will dominate any linear terrestrial economy and four engines of growth and dominance that change the world. Power, transportation, information, energy, and manufacturing. So he's kind of worried, right? Yeah, well, because basically whoever gets to the new market sets the new values and the precedent. Right. And we could either have the market with the values of our constitution. This is where we get kind of political and, you know, or we could have the values we see manifest in China. Yes. So right there, it's like, okay, do we want this to be under the same practices as the government of China, or would we want something more, more towards our values? So 
Yes. <clears throat> and it kind of makes you wonder if the reason why they're pushing the whole Space Force, right, when President Donald Trump talked about creating a Space Force, yeah, is it because of the information that they have, and they do believe that China is doing exactly that, creating like a Navy type thing where they have battleships and destroyers in space. So it's kind of hard to say. So maybe he was made to retire because <laughs> of some of the things he was saying, right? But, you know, he, he ultimately talks about a couple different things, but he, he re- refers to a couple things that, like that we need in space that according to what he says, we probably don't have Mm -hmm. like United States must be able to bring kinetic power and non-kinetic power and informational power to the battlefield cheaper and faster than its adversaries. So kinetic power, non-kinetic kinetic power. He's talking about like explosive weapons and non-explosive weapons in space. You don't really need an explosive weapon. Yeah. You just have to basically hit something with a rock to knock it out of its orbit. Huh? You just have to poke a hole in something to cause a problem in space. You don't have to like shoot, you know, blow it up mm-hmm. all like Star Wars style, Scott. You know what I mean? Star Trek yeah. or, or Star Trek. Yeah, you yeah. don't have to do any of that stuff. You just got to like cause an issue, right? Because there's no shield, so you just if you blast them on a rock. But see, and you know, see, that's the other part of it. Like we would need to make these advances. We would need something like the space force because we let our space program dwindle and die, and then privatize. Yep. Whereas China. Which is funny because, you know, the whole Cold War, Cold War ended. It's like we just stopped making certain advances. Yeah. And not just, you know, with <clears throat> what the Cold War entailed, but it was everything. Whereas well, other countries. You know, and that's part of it. Like, yeah. did we actually stop or we just keep doing it and we just kind of keep it on the down low? And, but when you keep things on a down low, you kind of keep them stunted. I mean, granted, yes, we're probably putting this huge budget into that stuff. But the lack of. I don't know. I'm one of those people that believes the more capacity of information, the more you can invite others to allow it to grow and evolve and, you know, more stuff. Um, With us letting certain things dwindle, whereas China just quietly kept working along. I mean, they didn't keep it secret, but they... Well, they weren't really quiet about it. They they said, hey, we're building our space program. We're going to the moon. We're going to do these things. Yeah. And so... We're going to send things to the moon. And, you know, we, we, we basically just kind of like downplay it. Yeah. And if anybody out there, Russia and China, <laughs> and it used to be the U.S. had this, you know, would have the upper hand in space for sure, but we don't anymore. Yeah. But Russia and China haven't stopped really doing what they're doing. So <clears throat> who knows, right? Yeah. But one of the things that he says... <laughs> which is kind of what drew this article to me and I seen it was what he says in this particular quote that came from one of the conferences that he made where he made these comments, which is the reason why we read this article and sort of alluded to what we were going to say. The technology is on the engineering benches today, but most Americans and most members of Congress have not had time to really look deeply at what's going on here. But I've had the benefit of 33 years of studying and becoming friends with these scientists. This technology can be built today with technology that is not developmental to deliver any human, right? Mm -hmm. Any place on planet Earth to any other place in less than an hour. Yeah. Okay. Now, what should be said here is that he is not just a lieutenant general, right? You think, okay, he's just this military dude. Mm -hmm. Well, he graduated from the Air Force Academy with a degree in astronautical engineering. (laughs) He holds a master's degree in public policy from Harvard's Kennedy School of Government. Yeah. And he was previously served as the commander of the 47th Operations Group at Lachlan Air Force Base. Oh. And the 4th Fighter Wing at Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. He's got 3,300 flight hours in the F-15E, T-6, T-37, and T-38, and over 650 combat hours. Wow. So he's not just some dude that's, like, making these outlandish claims. Right? Yeah. So (laughs) that's probably why they're like, you need to go ahead and retire. So if he's, like, dropping the hints that we do have the ability, the technological ability to make this sort of thing happen. 
and that China is doing stuff in space and that we need to do the same in space. And we do need a, a space force, right? So we can take a greater role in space. Mm-hmm. There may be something to it. You know, he, he's not just some wacko going some aliens in space. China's got battleships in space. And see, that's the thing, though. He's intelligent, he's articulate, and he basically is pushing the urgent need for a U.S. Space Force. This this article doesn't frustrate me about him. I find his experience and his background to be credible. I feel bad that he was, you know, basically forced into early retirement. The things he are, he's saying, though, are what bother me. It's like, oh, we have this under-the-table top-secret technology. That's not what he said. Yeah. What he actually said was we have the ability to, with the stuff that's on the engineering benches today, in other words, the stuff that's readily available. Yeah. We have the ability to do this sort of thing. Why haven't we? That's the thing. Who says we have it? Now, how would you take a person and put them anywhere on the planet in an hour? A teleporter. No. That's Star Trek garbage, right? (laughs) What you do is you, you put them on something you blast them out into space you fly where you want to go in space you come down through the atmosphere and you land oh you mean like the vomit comet almost what no well, i, well, I mean like a freaking up. no okay. no no, no. Vomit comet. the vomit comet is is a big i don't know what it is a big old airplane that yeah. just kind of goes up and down but it hits that and since it goes up and down no it doesn't yeah, no it, it goes it's up at a high altitude but it goes up and down so that when it does that, you appear to be weightless, and that's how poor you do part of your training. I'm talking about a vessel that leaves the Earth, goes out of the atmosphere, travels in space, and then drops back down through the atmosphere and lands somewhere else. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, think about if you can take, like, the X-37B, right? Yeah. That's this little space plane thing, spy space plane, whatever you want to call it. Looks kind of like a little mini version of the... Um, Space shuttles. Mm-hmm. It's been up there. It, uh, the last check that we had was like, whatever, 700 days or something like that. Yeah. But if you take a spaceship and you launch it out into space and you fly in the direction you want to go, all right, if the, if the planet's rotating and you and you can fly at 40,000 mm-hmm. miles an hour, you could effectively be in most places in about an hour. Mm-hmm. And if you look at things like the Aurora and some of the other projects we have where we have space planes... Right. If yeah. that's been in place since the 60s, 70s and, and, you know, into today. And we had that technology, you effectively could put a human somewhere on the planet, maybe in a little bit longer than an hour. But, you know. So maybe there's some technology out there these alluding to. And I know the Aurora is like an older update because yeah. they talk about like the donuts on a rope, you know, like sort of contrail that happens from this, you know, pulse jet plane, whatever they want to call it. Yeah. But he, he also brings up a couple <laughs> different things, too, where he talks about China again and how, and how China has been rapidly rapidly expanding its, spe- its presence in space. Yeah. Right. They put a lander on the far side of the moon. They've been developing a mothership aircraft, which they can basically rapidly and unpredictably launch space planes and other payloads into space. Right. And some of the space stuff that they've been launching, some of these satellites that they've been launching in space have been, as they say, eyebrow raising. Yeah. satellites because they don't know what they are. But some of the analysts that, you know, research this kind of thing says that it could be used in anti-satellite warfare. Hmm. And they've been heavily investing in their own traditional space program. So if they're investing and we're not, and they have technology that we don't, that's an advantage, right? Yeah. I was trying to look up the some updates about the X-37B. And how uh, apparently SpaceX had done a secret launch of it back in 2017. Yeah, well, don't don't talk about it. But then that's one of our episodes coming up. Don't talk about it. Yeah, don't talk about the X-37B. Well, now there's a link when you look it up for the CST-100. Dun dun dun. Starliner. Don't talk. Don't talk about it. I'm not. But the cool thing is, is that on this particular website, the drive.com, where this article came from, and all the links that we have in our show notes, we'll take you there if you want. China reveals wind tunnel test of space plane launching high speed mothership <laughs> aircraft. <laughs> and such a system would give China the ability to rapidly and unpredictably access space with a reusable orbiter. And in some related news, 
Russia just launched five je- five objects into space. <laughs> <laughs> right? China's historic mission to the dark side of the moon is about more than science. Hmm. We're just sitting around. We can't even get, man. We yeah. are to the point where we have to catch a ride to get into space, man. It, it's So if they're actually looking at building battleships and ships in space, we need to kind of be on top of that kind of thing. And more importantly, I want them to really look like battleships. <laughs> because, you know, I'm, I'm, Coming up on 50, and, you know, my anime cartoons when I was growing up was like Space Battleship Yamoto and things like that, like the old school Robotech and that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. It wasn't some of this cool fancy anime stuff that you guys have now, like G-Force and all these other. You should leave us a comment if you're, like, older and you had some anime that you like to watch. And don't say, like, Sailor Moon or something like that. I'll ban you, but I'm just saying. (laughs) I mean, Space Battleship Yamoto was actually pretty cool because it was a battleship in space. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think it doesn't make much sense, but you know, anyway, I think it's just alarming because like, like we're scrolling to the bottom of this article and it's the space section of this particular website. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, and it's it is. all, it's all China, 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 Russia, Russia, China. And then everything regarding the U S is, you know, ominous warning that shows of, uh, f- you know, forces needed to deter space attacks or, you know, we're deficient in some way. Yeah, well, I mean, you yeah. know, you put a bunch of, if you have something out there in space that can go around and knock out your communication satellites, that's not good. Yeah, So, but it's like, you know, the U.S. is trailing. Sorely out. lacking. Yeah. Or are we? I. We don't know. I think we are. Well, I think we are, too. I so, mean, if anything, I think we probably should put some money to it, but, you know. I don't know. Maybe it's patriotism, maybe it's not, but I don't, I don't want, like, China and Russia to own space. <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't know. Okay. But it was not all doom and gloom with this sort of thing. They're trying to launch the all-new military space service, right? It's yeah. going to be like the Space Force. And they're supposed to be devoting efforts to try to figure out things like how do you dogfight in space? Ooh. In other words, how do you bring warfare to space? I mean, yeah. the good news for us is, is that we have an amazing Hollywood presence. Where they have tried to figure some of this stuff out to bring you what would possibly be realistic space type scenarios. Like that movie that Sandra Bullock was in where she survives these these things in space. I don't know what it was called. You know, where they were talking that, you know, you, you wouldn't be able to hear anything at all unless you actually touch something, you know, stuff like cause sound has to travel through vibrations because it needs to hear all this like gravity. Is that what it's called? Yeah. To try to apply like real space physics to these movies to give you an idea. So, you know, they've done some homework, so I'm sure that they could uh, probably help figure it out. Maybe kind of add some of that to the repertoire of the war fighting manual. Hmm. You know, it's like that movie with Bruce Willis where he goes and gets on the asteroid, saves the planet. It's one of the best movies ever made. Can't think of what it's called. Well, evidently NASA visited the movie set where they looked at the... They're like uh, rover things or groundhogs or whatever they called them. They had to drive across the asteroid to see what they were looking at to see if it was feasible to apply some of that technology on like Mars or another planet. Yeah. Yeah. So I can't think of what that movie's called. It's one of the best movies ever. So if you guys know what that movie is, you should send me a message somewhere and let me know. You can do that on cre- contact at creepgeeks.com. You can do it on our Facebook group. Yeah. I mean, it had like Bruce Willis was in it. Steve Buscemi was in it. Liv Tyler was in it. Ben Affleck, before he was Batman, was in it. Um, Billy Bob Thornton was in it. Yeah. So there you go. And if you're the first person to tell us who that is and what that movie is, we're going to talk to you on the the podcast. In other words, we'll just mention your name. We're not really (laughs) going to talk to you. but, But anyway. So there you go. Just kind of right, re, sort of recap the top three so far of our top nine. Umamau is a mysterious asteroid that's basically been visiting our solar system from just outside of our solar system. Makes it unique. A black hole was photographed. And um, this lieutenant colonel, or I'm sorry, lieutenant general, basically says we have the current technological means to put a human on the planet in an hour, anywhere on the planet. And talks about the need for a space force. 
and says some pretty scary things. And he had to retire, probably because of some of the stuff that he says. But you know what? Yeah, I think they're right. You're just from kind of taking a little look to see what this guy's all about. He could be, and probably should be, the head of the new Space Force whenever it happens. Because it seems like he's got a handle on it. He's not afraid to talk about it. What happens in space stays in space. <laughs> Would you stop? So, anyway, there you go. So we hope you've enjoyed listening to this particular podcast, this audio podcast, our top nine mm-hmm. of 2019, number three. So there you go. Six more to go. That's true. So that's about all I got to say. Okay. Do you have anything that you'd like to say? Um, be sure to leave a comment um, or give us a rating if you have something to say about this episode or just want to reach out to us, contact at creekgeeks.com. And again, be sure to like our Facebook, like and follow our Facebook page. That's where you know where um, we release podcast episodes or big announcements about the show. Yeah. Yep. So be sure to follow us if you can and and listen up because at the end of the year we have a big announcement to make. Yeah. It's huge. Big announcement. 2020. Oh, how's it go? New me? New year? New year? New me? Mm -hmm. Everybody does that on Facebook? New year, new me. Yeah, new year. So it's new new year, year, new new us. New year, new you. Yeah. Was it? The marketing. So the marketing is new year, new you. And then you are supposed to go, that's right. Whole new year. It's a new me. Oh, whatever. Yeah. Okay. I just became way more tedious than I wanted it to be. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, we're going to have some big announcements to make. It's going to be great. You should be there. Be fantastic. You should listen up. And actually, if you do listen to the podcast, very much appreciate it so far. We're rocking about uh, 24,000 downloads this year, and a, and a bunch of uh, people have kind of, it's been good so far. So mm-hmm. 2020 is set to be even better. It's going to be great. Mm-hmm. Lots of traveling to do, lots of uh, conferences and conventions to go through, uh, go to, and lots of uh, videos we're going to make. we got a lot of stuff going on. It's going to be great. Yeah. All right. Anyway, got to go. So see you later. Take it easy. Bye, Cycle. Bye. <laughs>